8. Project Azorian In April 1968, a Soviet submarine known only as K-129 plunged to the ocean floor off Hawaii. After weeks of searching, USSR officials gave up trying to find it, but several months later, the United States Navy launched a top-secret mission, codenamed Operation Sand Dollar, to find and photograph the wreck. And surprisingly, it took just three weeks to locate K-129, at a depth of 16,000 feet, 4,877 meters. Two years later, in 1970, high-ranking Defense Department and CIA officials embarked on a secret plan to recover the submerged vessel. Dubbed Project Azorian, it was the deepest salvage attempt ever made. At a grand total of around $800 million, equivalent to around $4 billion in modern currency. It was also one of the most expensive and complicated Cold War intelligence undertakings. One of the reasons the expedition was so expensive was because a vessel was built specifically for the mission. As a cover-up, the government claimed that the ship, the Hughes Glomar Explorer, was built for mining. Two torpedoes and several other pieces of equipment were recovered from K-129 including code books and other documents that the CIA was presumably thrilled to get their hands on. The team also recovered the remains of six Russian service members who'd gone down with the wreck and gave them a proper burial at sea with military honors. In 1975, Time magazine published an expose about the government's true intentions with the mission. Despite the CIA's best efforts to squash the story, the agency remained tight-lipped even after the article came out. Several participants have given interviews over the years, but the exact details of what the mission uncovered are unclear to this day. 7. The Fate of Colonel Charles Shelton United States Air Force pilot Captain Charles Shelton was the last American service member to be officially considered a prisoner of war taken during the Vietnam conflict. He was flying a reconnaissance mission over Laos in 1965 when his plane was shot down by enemy forces. Shelton initially remained in radio contact with the Air Force, but he eventually stopped. Since then, he's only been seen and heard of in an unofficial capacity. In other words, there have been reported sightings of him, but none have been confirmed. Shelton's fate became even more shrouded in mystery during the 1980s, when all the missing Vietnam War soldiers were reclassified as killed in action or body not recovered. He was the only one who remained missing in action. However, his status was officially changed to killed in action at the request of his family in 1994, although his true fate remains unknown to this day. Some believe Shelton survived and was taken prisoner, yet was never found or accounted for by US forces. Others have speculated that he might have even killed his captor, or that he was alive and well living in America. But if that's not the case, he must have been living under the guise of witness protection. Sadly, not knowing what happened to their loved one took a major toll on Shelton's family, including his wife, who ended her own life 25 years after he initially went missing. 6. Who was Agent 355? During the American Revolution, a group of spies and espionage agents called the Culper Ring operated in and around New York City under the command of a man named Benjamin Talmadge. Sometimes it was run by George Washington himself, but the Culper Ring's top dog was a farmer from Long Island named Abraham Woodhull, who went by the alias Sam Culper and was a neighbor of Benjamin Talmadge. Culper and Talmadge kept Washington informed of their findings through a complex communication network, providing updates about any plans among the British that they found out about. During that time, Woodhull recruited a female secret agent known only as Agent 355, and her identity was never revealed to any other members of the Culper Ring. In the nearly 250 years since, speculation about Agent 355's identity has run rampant, but researchers appear no closer to figuring out who she was than they were back in the 18th century but some believe that the term Agent 355 may have represented more than one person. What makes the mystery of her identity even more intriguing is the fact that she provided Woodhull with extremely valuable and difficult to access information about an American general who was secretly negotiating with the British to hand over the colonial stronghold at West Point. 
She also warned the Americans of plans among the British to produce counterfeit colonial currency and to attack French troops in Newport, Rhode Island. Agent 355 stopped reporting to the Culper Ring in 1780. Some historians believe she was captured by the British, while others have speculated that she may have even given birth aboard a British ship. But all experts can do for now is guess, and Agent 355's identity, or identities, remain a mystery to this day. What are your theories about the identity of Agent 355? Let us know in the comments below. 5. What happened to POW John Dunn? When the armistice that brought the Korean War to a standstill was signed in 1953, 23 American prisoners of war refused repatriation to the United States. They were from a larger POW group that the Chinese called Progressives, and their denouncement of U.S. involvement in the Korean War was most definitely considered treason. Under its legal definition, treason is punishable by death. Some POWs went as far as participating in propaganda films, snitching on fellow detainees, and willingly wearing the enemy's uniform. When the armistice was reached, the 23 prisoners who didn't want to return to America were held in neutral zones. They were allowed to change their mind, though, and two of them did. Even most of the dissidents who settled in China, known as turncoats, eventually returned to America. However, two men stayed in China permanently, but occasionally visited the U.S. But one man, John Dunn, never returned to the States even for a visit. Writing for The New Yorker, Brandon McNally described Dunn as a mysterious character who left China in 1959 for a new life in Czechoslovakia with his wife, who was believed to be a diplomat. And Dunn was never seen or heard from again, at least as far as anyone in the U.S. knows. Dunn is even absent from footage that features the other 22 POWs who stayed behind in China. In 2013, a researcher discovered that Dunn was on file with a secret communist Czech police agency called the STB. The file was found in a database that was managed in central Slovakia, and while its details are sparse, it provides more information than researchers previously knew about Dunn. One of the biggest surprises was that his wife wasn't a diplomat, but a student. She was from a family that was very involved with the communist movement, but her individual power within the group waned after she married an American man. Even though Dunn was a defector, the Czech communists were still highly suspicious of him. They didn't trust him, which indicates that he may not have been the high-profile traitor spy that he was thought to be until the discovery of the file. In fact, his life wasn't only ordinary, but rather uneventful. He didn't speak the Slovakian language and therefore couldn't find a job. He and his wife had four kids, yet lived in a single-room apartment. Even after he finally scored work at a brick factory, he was under the constant, watchful eye of the secret police, despite the fact that agents never found any damning evidence against him. 4. Flying Tiger Line Flight 739 during the early stages of the Vietnam War, the U.S. military chartered a Lockheed L-1049 Super Constellation prop liner to carry 93 American Army Ranger Specialists and three Vietnamese soldiers from Travis Air Force Base in California to Saigon, Vietnam. Known as the Flying Tiger Flight 739, the aircraft stopped to refuel in Guam, then departed for Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. Along the way, the plane vanished without sending any distress calls, prompting one of the biggest sea and air searches in the history of the Pacific. After eight days passed with no sign of the missing aircraft or anyone on it, the search was called off. A civilian claimed to have seen what looked like an in-flight explosion on the night the aircraft disappeared, but their report didn't help to keep the search going. To this day, nobody knows what became of Flying Tiger Line Flight 739. The plane took off from Guam with nine full hours worth of fuel, which should have been plenty enough to reach the Philippines with. In an investigation report, the Civilian Aeronautics Board CAB, concluded that the aircraft likely exploded in flight due to an unknown cause. Sadly, that's the only amount of closure authorities have been able to offer the surviving loved ones of the people who disappeared. But what do you think happened to Flying Tiger Line Flight 739? Let us know in the comments below. But first, be sure to subscribe. 3. The Grey Ghost of the Confederacy 
Commander John Singleton Mosby led the 43rd Battalion of the Confederate Army, better known as Mosby's Rangers. Based in North Central Virginia, the unit was notorious for its ability to carry out lightning-fast raids and to elude Union troops by disappearing into thin air and then blending in seamlessly with locals. Most of Mosby's 29 men had no previous military experience, yet they became known as some of the quickest and cleverest soldiers of the American Civil War. In 1863, Mosby and his rangers captured 58 horses, a Union general, two captains, and 30 enlisted soldiers without firing a single shot. Mosby's impressive stealth eventually earned him the nickname of the Grey Ghost of the Confederacy. In addition to his stellar hiding abilities, he was extremely resilient, and on one occasion, he returned to the battlefield just a month after taking a bullet to the groin. But Mosby's worst wartime injury came when a Union soldier shot him through the window of a home where he was eating. A doctor declared the wound mortal. Yet Mosby recovered and returned to fighting just two months later. The Union became desperate to get its hands on Mosby, so much so that a $5,000 bounty was offered on his head, roughly the equivalent of $90,000 in modern currency. Even with so many people after him, however, Mosby managed to evade capture. His enemies were dumbfounded, and they simply couldn't figure out the secret behind his vanishing axe. Even when they were hot on his trail, he somehow seemed to magically slip out of sight. Mosby was one of the last members of the Confederacy to surrender. After the war, he became friends with his former enemy, Ulysses S. Grant. The cunning ex-commander went on to serve as the American consul to Hong Kong and also worked for the Department of Justice. Then, at the age of 82, he passed away in 1916. 2. Who burned New York City to the ground? During his first military campaign in the summer of 1776, George Washington was tasked with defending New York City against the British Army, which was considerably larger, better organized, better equipped, and much more experienced than the Colonial Army. Desertion, disease, and defeat pushed Washington's troops back into New Jersey as his forces grew increasingly weak. Shortly before their withdrawal, someone burned a large portion of Manhattan to the ground. At the time, the Big Apple occupied the southern tip of the island. The city was a mere fraction of its modern-day size. Roughly one-third of its buildings were destroyed in the fire, which started on the night of September 20th and continued into the next morning. There are varying accounts of who started the fire and how, from both British and colonial witnesses, but none of them corroborate one another. According to an American prisoner, the fire began inside a tavern in Whitehall. And records show that British commander Sir William Howe immediately suspected arson. The British then proceeded to arrest and question more than 200 civilians about the fire. Some colonists believe the blaze was set deliberately, pointing out that it seemed to start in multiple locations at the same time. And it's on record that Washington discussed the possibility of destroying the city during a meeting with the Continental Congress. In his mind, burning down the Big Apple was a better alternative to leaving it in the hands of the British. And while the idea was ultimately shot down, the fact that it happened so shortly after the meeting led to suspicions that Washington allowed the plan to go forward, while conveniently turning a blind eye to it. Either way, no official explanation for the fire was ever offered, leaving its cause a mystery to this day. 1. Who killed Trin Minh Pei? In 1951, when Vietnam was under French colonial control, a Vietnamese military leader named Trin Minh Thế defected from the French army, along with thousands of supporters. His plan was to form a new military called the Union of Nationalist Forces of Vietnam. This new army would fight against both communist and colonial forces. Chin Minh Thế's military vision was cut short four years later in 1955, when a sniper shot and killed him on a street in Saigon in broad daylight. To this day, the sniper's identity remains a mystery. At the time of his death, it's said that Thế was under pressure to join forces with the South Vietnamese army, and that he was considering caving in to the urge to combine power. If that had happened, the outcome of the Vietnam War may have been much different because it would have given the South Vietnamese army much more manpower. 
But it's not necessarily regrettable that it didn't happen, because as most people agree, the West should have simply stayed out of Vietnam, period. Which of these mysterious wartime events intrigued you the most? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.